Tisha, Tigger, Tigger, Tig. Back with more vibes for all here, you know what I mean? I just want to keep this one a little light. It's always good to know the things that we have today, what is the history of it, how have it progress? I digress. <laughs> this one is called the history of toilets. So let's dive into this. Let's YouTube and Sim Sim Everybody poops, and almost always in a toilet. But it wasn't always the glamorous solo activity it is today. It used to be a weird group thing in some places, and very disturbingly, pig food in others. So how did we go from wildly defecating in the streets to sitting comfortably on a piece of art? Today, we're going to look at the history of toilets. But before we plop down, be sure to subscribe to Weird History and let us know about what modern day conveniences you would like to hear more about. Now, let's go see a man about a horse. Let's go. The first known toilet and sewer system showed up on the scene in 2500 BC in northern India and Pakistan. Way, way ahead of their time, houses in the Indus Valley could, in theory, list a bathroom in the home listing with rooms dedicated solely for numbers one and two, sometimes three. These rooms contained drain pipes that led to a central sewage system, which could be flushed by simply dumping water into the toilet. Sounds like a very familiar process so far. Nothing weird yet. Sewage was carried through a simple grid system in pipes made of brick. You know, this is saying that it's funny because when I was a, really, uh, a kid growing up on the island, uh, our water system wasn't the best. So sometimes, especially when I live on the southern tip of the island, we didn't have a... Uh, we didn't get running water constantly. Sometimes we had to walk a mile or so to get water because the water didn't reach up to the level of where my house was. But oh, I remember one of the things we used to do to flush the toilet was just take a bucket of water and pour it down in the toilet itself and it would flush everything. They just said that. Wow, that is crazy. Isn't it though? In terracotta, or all the necessary components to build a house in Florida. This allowed the waste to be carried from multiple floors of the home and dumped into the nearest body of water, or what we today call Florida. These pipes were relatively sophisticated with accessible utility holes that led from the street to the main drainage line, and wooden screens built into the end of the drainage lines to block solid waste. Both of these were crafted to make maintaining the sewers as easy and less gross as possible. While many of the elements of this ancient infrastructure do strongly resemble what we use today, it would take thousands of very messy years before Western societies would catch up with this sanitation system. Whoa. For a society that worshiped cats, it's only appropriate the Egyptians also used a bathroom like one. Ancient Egyptian toilets were designed specifically with water conservation in mind. They, in general, went hard on saving, believing in only using H2O with the intent to reuse it. With no running water in Egyptian homes, even with dedicated rooms in which to bathe, Egyptians would pour water onto themselves at bath time, which was collected in jars and reused for agriculture and gardening. The Egyptian 1% would perch their rich behinds onto limestone seats to relieve themselves into containers filled we're heading in that direction again with way climate change and stuff is coming. You have to reuse water and things like that. With sand, which would be cleaned out by the servants, or what today is called owning a cat. The lower plebeian class would also relieve themselves in pits of sand, but their poor garbage butts had to settle for a dumb wooden stool with a hole cut in the middle instead of a more glorious, non-splintery limestone. What a dump for a dump. If you weren't hungry before watching this video, you're about to be starving, particularly for a bacon treat. During the Han Dynasty in China, farmers constructed toilets that were directly fed back into their pig pens. Though these toilets look similar to a traditional outhouse, there was one small difference. Rather than the waste feeding into a hole in the ground, it fed into the hole of a pig's face. The waste was routed into the pig pen, which the pigs, being pigs, would then consume as a light snack. Once this was digested, So the feces were going into the pig's sty or the pig pen. The pigs would eat it. Then they slaughtered the pigs and eat the pigs. So in essence, indirect cannibalism, <laughs> I don't know. The waste from this human waste turned into pig waste would be used as fertilizer, thus eliminating the need for a sanitation system. Include that in a verse of the circle of life, cowards.
Roman bathrooms sounded like quite the social scene. Their bathrooms consisted of long stone or wooden benches with holes scattered about for users to take care of their business while in comfortable sitting position. These elevated bench toilets were purposely built to hover one to two feet above the ground to make it easier to flush the water through using the sewage system that ran throughout the city. And no, there were no dividers between bench holes, making going to the bathroom more of a group social activity than a private moment to oneself. Running water, directed from Rome's aqueducts, flushed out the troughs beneath the toilets. While a great way to flush away waste, it was a bad way to prevent rat attacks from open sewer lines and occasional fires from built-up methane. But when it comes to ancient toilet systems, you win some and you lose some. A bunch of potential rats on fire, however, can probably go in the losing column. Medieval castle toilets relied on the magical power of gravity to do most of the heavy lifting of taking waste to a more desirable place, away from the castle. Castles were equipped with rooms dedicated for answering the call of nature, but they were called garter robes, not bathrooms. Garter robes were nothing to write home about, with very few bells or whistles. The humble garter robe was a small room with chutes that led to a moat or communal cesspit for the dung to float away or around the castle. If the point of the moat is to keep enemies out of the castle, a good addition to one would be oh, floating yeah. poo as a deterrent for crossing. You gotta really hit some way to swim to be pulled together at them. <laughs> I don't care, I want the king. Bring me the king, I'll swim to the king. Before the indoor flushing toilets were popularized in the 20th century, most people had to wander down to local cesspools in order to relieve themselves. A pretty nifty inconvenience for something where convenience is paramount. This could also be a potentially hazardous trip to take at night. So rather than march down to a lovely sounding local cesspool, people would have chamber pots in their room. Chamber pots were small metal or ceramic containers designed to hold waste that were later emptied into pools. That's what we call them. So uh, in the middle of the night, if you feel the urge to go, you just put your tent slow. But some people put do number two in it. I never did. Why would I want to sleep in my poo under my bed until I get up in the morning to go? You know what I mean? But it, it was like, we used to call it a tent, so you, you do number one in it, and then you groggily go back to bed. And then in the morning, you know, but all of that stuff, the older I got, you know what I mean? And I, 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 don't, I can't remember the last time I saw one. I guess I was about six years old was the last time I saw one, but we call them tensors, we use them. Tools are just sort of casually thrown out the window. A fun thing to be on the lookout for when walking underneath a window, surely. They remained a popular- See, we didn't throw it out the window. We just use it and then throw it to the toilet and then flush the toilet. But like I said, that's, that's when I was like really young. I'm, you know, I'm old, so. <laughs> way to go to the bathroom until World War II and are even used today in some parts of the world where indoor plumbing is still not a thing. Since chamber pots were a regular fixture in people's homes, they weren't afraid to jazz them up a bit, turning them into less of a pot to piss in and more of a fun little home decoration to whiz in. Some were ornate and made of ceramic or fine china. See, that's where the phrase come from, I don't even have a pot to piss in. Right there, there is the pot. You know, some people don't even have that. They have to take the treacherous journey outside in the middle of the night. China and others were encased in decorative boxes. Some were designed with verses like, Use me well and keep me clean and I'll not tell what I've seen. Which now, of course, has been reduced to simply live, laugh, love. Sir John Harrington was a controversial writer known for his risque poetry and political writings. He also invented a flush toilet in the late 16th century, as one typically does while writing poetry. In The Metamorphosis of Ajax, Harrington described the device as an elevated cistern that dumped water into the toilet bowl and removed waste via the pulling of a chain, or what sounds remarkably like a current day toilet. Unfortunately, The Metamorphosis of Ajax was also a thinly veiled criticism of the English government, so the invention of a toilet, somehow sandwiched between critiques of the monarchy, presumably got thrown out with the bathwater, as they say, for nearly two centuries. Queen Elizabeth. Wow, it was a political thing. Can you imagine that being a political uh, uh, debate of using a modern day toilet, which is what, what they would call it, but you know, using a, a more convenient toilet than using a, well, no, I'm not using this thing. Wow. It was 
Elizabeth I, however, did have one built for herself, which is probably not the takeaway Harrington was aiming for when it came to a queen reading his anti-government pamphlet. It wasn't until the mid-18th century when the flushable toilet was beginning to truly have a moment. Scottish inventor Alexander Cumming and English inventor John Brahma both developed the advanced plumbing devices that assisted in the creation of the modern-day flushing toilet. Cumming created the S-trap, which allowed the water to sit in the bowl and act as a barrier against the foul smell of sewage and gas, and also a popular source of drinking water for bad dogs. Though Harrington technically was the first to invent the toilet, it was Cumming who held the patent. It was during the installation process of Cumming's design when Braham developed a valve with a hinged flap that sealed the water in the bowl. Thanks to these two advances in the design of the toilet, these babies began selling like hotcakes with water closets growing in popularity throughout the mid-18th and 19th centuries. After World War I, all new buildings built in the UK were required to include an indoor toilet. We've come a long way from throwing our dung out the window. <laughs> Thomas Crapper. So that's why they call it the Given Crapper. his last name and how hilarious and ironic it would be, Thomas Crapper is often falsely credited as the inventor of the modern toilet. In reality, Crapper was more like the band Kiss of toilets. He didn't invent the toilet, but he sure knew how to market the crap out of it. An early sanitation pioneer, Crapper is credited for inventing the oddly beautiful U-Bend plumbing trap that is still used in toilets and sinks today. Crapper displayed his toilet products in showrooms and tried to sell his sanitation designs to the wealthy. And yes, Crapper was not the inventor of the flushing toilet. But when people would draw the conclusion, he didn't go out of his way to correct them. Why ruin it? It was better this way. Edward VII hired him to install dozens of indoor bathrooms in several royal palaces, which contributed to his fame. But mostly, of course, it was that his last name was Crapper and his whole life was toilets. <laughs> George Jennings, a sanitation engineer and auteur toilet inventor, was the first to propose the idea of installing public flush toilets throughout London. Jennings designed a series of toilets for use at an art exhibit in 1851 that cost a penny per use. Jennings' art toilets that cost money for use were a big hit, especially with poorer folk who couldn't afford a flush toilet of their own, but could afford a penny to use one. With these toilets being a bona fide hit, Jennings proposed to build public facilities at the Royal Exchange, a major commerce and business sector in London. The government ignored this idea at first, with the strange belief that nobody would want a public bathroom, claiming the results of several trial public bathrooms proved they were bunk. The Royal Society of Arts, the money behind Jennings' public toilets at the art show, installed a handful of test pay toilets around London soon after to see if it was a thing people wanted. The move ended up being a financial catastrophe, even if its heart was in the right place. In 1885, London officials finally came around on Jennings' idea, several years after the plumber passed away. The first facilities were built at the Royal Exchange, but not by Jennings' company, which seems like kind of a real jerk move by the Royal Exchange. Wow. As the population began to boom, so did contagious diseases that spread like wildfire due to widespread unsanitary conditions. Cholera, in particular, was the contagious disease du jour, whose spreading was aided greatly by poor sanitation systems. Because of this, the dry toilet was invented as a way to use the bathroom without water as the flushing mechanism, but rather it would divert waste or use covering material such as peat to absorb the liquid. First invented by an English priest named Henry Moule with a patent in 1873, he was able to get the design in schools and public hospitals in England and India, but despite cutting maintenance costs and eliminating odors famously associated with sewage systems, his design did not catch on. We can thank this failure today for all of our wet toilets. So what do you think? Are you watching this video from a toilet? We bet you are. Wow, that's interesting. Let's all get up, y'all. You know what I mean? Design have changed too much since the original design. When you really think about it, maybe a little tweaking here and tweaking there to make it more because we're growing so fast, make it more usable to everybody. But you know that was interesting. But I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this video. Check it out and take you know see what this channel have you know that you might be interested in. But still keep watching mine because I have a variety of historical stuff there you could watch. You know what I mean? I also have funny stuff too. You know what I mean? So click here. Go check it out. Binge watch. YouTube and Sim Simmer, I tell you.
All right, y'all take care of each other.